What's happening? Thanks for joining me on this Sunday. And look, it's WrestleMania weekend. So if something is going to interrupt my WrestleMania weekend, you know it has to be a big deal. And it is a big deal. Kyle Duggar has decided to sign a contract extension with the Patriots. Patriots get this deal done. Four years, $58 million, $32.5 million guaranteed. We'll get your thoughts on all of this. I want your comments. I want your likes. I want your subscriptions. $32.5 million guaranteed. Andrew Callahan writes that this makes Duggar the sixth highest paid safety in football. He has the fifth most guaranteed money at that position. So this is a big contract. This is huge money for Kyle Duggar. Huge money. Big time money. And I talked about this over the last week or so. I was open to a trade of Kyle Duggar. I would have been open to dealing Duggar if I could get a third round pick or better. Here's the thing. I have to imagine his market wasn't necessarily awesome. When you look at the idea for any team to not only pay Duggar 13, 14, 15 million per season and give up a draft asset, that would have been a very, very tough pill to swallow. And the transition tag also made things more difficult to try to negotiate a deal, right? Because a team would have had to show interest. The Patriots would have decided not to match the contract, but try to force that team to give up a pick. So this is what the Patriots decided to do. Sign Kyle Duggar to a four-year, $58 million deal, $32.5 million guaranteed. This is 100% on overpay. Don't get it twisted. Kyle Duggar is getting overpaid. There's no doubt about that. At least there's no doubt about that in my mind. I don't think you can argue that Duggar is a top five safety in football. Top 10, yes, you can have that argument. But top five? And this pays him like a top five safety in the NFL. I've been talking about this for the last month, month and a half, that the safety market is depressed. These guys aren't getting paid big time money. They're not getting these kinds of contracts. They're not getting $32.5 million guaranteed. So this is an overpay. Duggar is not great in coverage. We know that. He's not a guy that can do everything on the field at that position. So his coverage issues make him, to me, closer to 10 than 5 when you talk top 10 safeties in football. So this is an overpay. Let's get that straight. This is absolutely an overpay. Sixth highest paid safety, fifth most in guaranteed money. I don't think he is good enough for that kind of money. However, this is good for the Patriots. Wait a minute, Nick. What? You just said they overpaid the guy. It's good for the Patriots. And I'll tell you why it's good for the Patriots. Keep your good football players. Even if you have to overpay those guys to make them happy. Keep your good football players. If you can't get a great pick from him for him in return, then you keep him. You keep your good players. You're coming off of a four-win season. You're going to rely on this defense. Keep your good players. Keep your good players on that side of the football. You have less questions to address. Less questions to address by keeping Duggar in the fold. Evan Lazar posted this today, and I think he's dead on. Great stuff from Evan. Retaining Duggar, Owenu, Hunter Henry, Jennings, Bourne, and Uche feels like the Patriots' way of staying on course to go quarterback, wide receiver, tackle in the draft. It's a great point by Evan. He continued, I compare it to the interior offensive line management in 21-22. We've talked about this on the podcast, right? How the Patriots mishandled the guard position. Start with Tooney, then Shaq Mason, then Ted, Ted Karras. And because you mishandled the interior offensive line, you were left drafting Cole Strange in the first round, which pretty much everybody felt was a reach. And then you had to utilize four interior offensive line draft picks in the top 150 over the last couple of drafts. So you failed to handle the interior offensive line with your own guys. You had Tooney, could have kept him. You didn't. You had Mason, could have kept him. You didn't. You had Ted Karras, could have kept him. Guess what? You didn't. And because of that, because you drew the hard line with all three of those guys, you ended up 
having to utilize the draft over and over and over again to try to fill those spots. And because you had to pay so much attention to the interior offensive line in the draft, that meant you didn't address other needs. I did a podcast going back a few weeks ago. The idea that you did not handle the interior offensive line, which led you to reach for Cole Strange, which meant you could not use that draft pick or you didn't want to use the draft pick on McDuffie, who goes to Kansas City, a cornerback. And because of that, you had to use the pick on Christian Gonzalez last year to get your number one cornerback. It was the trickle-down effect. It was Bill Belichick, the general manager, Bill Belichick, the president of football operations, failing to stay ahead of the curve, which is why you have the offensive situation that you have now. Walking into an offseason without a tight end, without a tackle, without a wide receiver one, without a bona fide quarterback. You also look at the rest of this team. Jabril Peppers, he's on a one-year deal, right? He's got one year left on his contract. Do you want to bring him back? Not sure. Marte Mapu is an unknown. I think he's going to be good. I hope he's going to be good. But you don't know with any certainty that he's going to be good. So signing Kyle Duggar to this contract, even though it's an overpay, even though it's an overpay, you're keeping your good football players and you have less questions to address now in the short term, and in the long term. Don't forget, as you're watching on this Sunday, to give us that like, thumbs up, special breaking news pod for all of you today. Give us that thumbs up. More thumbs means more eyeballs. Slap that YouTube algorithm right in the face. So don't forget to like, and don't forget to subscribe. Tomorrow is the goal deadline. Trying to hit 3,000 subscriptions by tomorrow. We're about 100 away from that mark. We've got to keep pushing. So give us that like. Subscribe. If you're catching this on demand, Spotify, Apple Pods, don't forget to rate and review as well. All right, back to Duggar. The other reason why, and again, I would have, if you're just jumping in, I would have looked to trade Duggar if I could get a third round pick or better. I would have been fine with that. But I think the transition tag, the market, I don't know. I don't believe that was possible. When you sit back and you look at the money you would have to pay Duggar, and to give up the pick, I just don't see that happening, right? So when you look at what the Patriots did here, again, they overpaid, they kept their good player, less questions to address in the future, and they continue to spend. They continue to spend money. Now, over the cap, I don't think they have added the Duggar contract just yet because it happened, right? It just happened. I'm fairly confident that the numbers on the website right now at over the cap they are pre-Duggar deal. So what I did was I went to over the cap and I added the Duggar contract to the numbers. And if you add the Duggar contract, what is being reported? The $32.5 million guaranteed, the $58 million over four years. If you add the Duggar contract into the spending for the Patriots this offseason, they are fifth in total spending, $219 million. They are fifth in total spending. They are sixth in total guarantees. $123.975 million. I do not want to hear anybody tell me that the Patriots are not spending money. False. False. A Fakakta narrative that continues to be built this offseason, which has not made sense from the beginning. They are spending money. Now, you can disagree with the idea of spending money on your own players. You can say that they're not spending it on the right guys. They should have spent it on this guy or that guy. They should have went out and got Kirk Cousins. They should have given Calvin Ridley $25 million a year instead of the $22 million a year that they offer. They should have given him $50 million guaranteed instead of the $40 million guaranteed. They are spending money. If you add the Duggar deal into this offseason, fifth in total spending, sixth in total guarantees. So for the people who say they're not spending money, that is not true. They're full of crap. They just don't like this idea that they're full of crap. So they continue to push on you that the Patriots are not spending. Again, we can go tit for tat on what they're spending on. But there's no denying they're spending money this offseason. There, there's, there's zero denying that. The evidence is there. The numbers are there. They're pouring money into this roster. They're pouring money into keeping their players. 
along with some outside additions. So there's a different argument here. It's not about who, it's about what. The what is that they're spending money. Whether you agree or disagree with who they're spending that money on, it doesn't matter. If your biggest beef is this team is being cheap because they're not being cheap, they're spending money. They're top five in the league right now in money spent. So stop with that. Extensions count. Resigning your players count to the money that you spent. Whether people like that or not, you know, you can't have it both ways. You just can't. You can't sit around and, and, and argue and cry and complain that the Patriots don't spend money. And then when they spend money on Michael Wenu and Kyle Duggar, then turn around and say, oh, well, they're overpaid. You either want the team to spend money on good players or you don't. They're spending money on good players. Fact. Not even debatable. Not even debatable. So the people who are going to sit here and cry and say it's an overpay, you can say it's an overpay, but don't sit there and tell me that they're not spending money. Don't do it. Because you make no sense if you're making that argument. That argument is just useless to me. They are willing to pay at or near the top of the market. They paid Michael Wenu a top-tier tackle deal. They are paying Kyle Duggar as a top five slash six safety, depending on if you're talking about total money and guaranteed money. They're paying Duggar like a top five safety and guarantees. They offered Calvin Ridley a bunch of money. So they're willing. They have been willing this offseason to pay at or near the top of the market for players that they think deserve that. For players that they feel are critical to the operation. No doubt about it. And another thing, they're not playing games. I like that, right? The Patriots are not playing games. Last year, they allowed Jacoby Myers to walk over like a million dollars. Own player, right? Brought in, developed, somebody that you trust, somebody that you know, and you decide to let Myers walk over what he says was a million bucks. Now, I think he means a million bucks per year on the average, but over a million dollars. You decided not to sign DeAndre Hopkins last year to a very, very affordable and reasonable contract because you wanted to give Devontae Parker an extension because Parker got upset and got his underwear all bunched up because you were talking to Hopkins in the first place. What I like about this is they're not playing games. There's no negotiating games here, right? They looked at Awenu. They said, you're worth this money. We're going to pay you at or near the top of the market. They looked at Duggar. They said, we want to get a deal done, and they got the deal done. They're not screwing around. They're not nickel and diming their own players, which is a complete, complete different approach than what they had done in past years. They're not playing hardball with their own guys. They're saying, we value you. We think you're good to very good at what you do. We want to keep you. This is what we're going to do. We're going to give you an offer that is absolutely a legitimate, bona fide, top or near the top of the market kind of contract offer. And I like that. I like when you take care of your own. I like when you don't screw around. Because when you screw around, you lose some of those talents. And so this is a different way of negotiating with their own players. Now, it's, it's, not, it's not to say that they never re-signed their own players. Of course they did. And they gave those players good contracts at the time, like Rob Gronkowski. But it was like pulling teeth. It's not like pulling teeth right now. So no games being played. All right, as you watch this special Sunday pre-Chinese food, pre-WrestleMania, night two uh, podcast on the Patriots signing Kyle Duggar to a contract extension, $58 million, $32.5 million guaranteed is the reported deal. Give us that thumbs up, more thumbs. That expands, extends the reach of this podcast. I'm jumping in on a Sunday, everybody. We're doing this thing on a Sunday afternoon. I could have kicked up my feet. Said, we'll wait until tomorrow, but that's not what we do. Something big breaks, 
If I have the means to get to it, we get to it as soon as possible. Here we are on a Sunday. If you like slash love the content, give us that thumbs up. Let's defeat that YouTube algorithm together. And don't forget to subscribe. If you end up catching this podcast on demand because you didn't know it was happening, one way to rectify that situation is by subscribing to the podcast, and then you can get the notifications. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Apple Pods, Spotify, rate and review. All right. Another thing I like about this deal, and again, it's an overpay. I said that. It's an overpay. But uh, the other thing I like about this deal is that the Patriots are standing by their core. They're sending the message. Look, even if you don't think this team is going to amount to much in 2024, the team still needs a foundation. You still need a foundation to build upon. And so when you take care of your own, when you keep guys like Awenu and you keep guys like Duggar and when you keep Anthony Jennings, that is keeping some of the foundation. You, you can't just burn the entire house down to the ground and start from scratch. You need some of that foundation. It helps build the culture. It helps you compete. So that's what you do. If you let all of these guys walk, if you replace Mike Owenu with Chuck Sakura for, for example, and then you draft a tackle in like the third or fourth round, what are you telling your players that are currently on this roster that are currently signed? What are you telling them? Are you even trying to compete? Are you even trying to make the team better? What's the slogan this offseason? Patriots colon, just get better. One way to start getting better is to actually keep your good core players by securing that foundation and building off of that. You need that foundation. You need to build that culture. You need to make a statement to the guys in the locker room that you're at least going to try to compete this season. You can't just walk in and say, oh, we're going to win three games, four games again, top five pick. That's what we're gunning for. Gerard Mayo and Elliot Wolf are also living up to their word, aren't they? I don't know if Patriots fans see that as something as, as refreshing. I do. They're, they're standing by their word. Elliot Wolf and Mayo, both of them, have said multiple times, we want to keep Michael Wenu, we want to keep Kyle Duggar. We want those guys back. They're both back and secure with top-notch contracts. They told us, we want to keep our best players. We want to make those guys happy. We want them to be part of this core. And they've done that. They've done that by bringing back two good players. All right, we'll get into Kyle Duggar and how to deploy him moving forward and what he means to this defense. But let's jump to a super chat here. J.B. Brown, $5 super chat. Thank you, J.B. You guys can send super chats with your comments and questions. Jump to the front of the line like J.B. did. I'm torn. Like the team keeping guys, but don't view Duggar as special in a top five contract way. Still don't know who will cover a tight end or deep crosser. So, JB, you know, I, I agree with the money part of it. As I said, this is an overpay. I don't know if anybody would argue the idea that Duggar is, is not a top five safety in the league. I, I don't know anybody who believes that. Maybe there's some of you out there. But I think the vast majority of us look at Duggar and say, top 10 guy, not top five guy. So overpay, yes. We also have to recognize that at times you have to overpay, especially if you're coming off of a four-win season, right? So there are times you're going to have to overpay. I don't think they had to overpay with Duggar, but the idea of keeping your good players and taking care of them, it means something in the league. Other players will look at this deal. Other people within the league will look at this deal, and they will now start saying that the Patriots are a team that takes care of guys that they have drafted, developed, and who produce. And I think in the big picture from 30,000 feet, that does mean something. It means something to have the perception change about your organization, right? No longer are they the quote-unquote cheap Patriots or no longer are they going to drive a hard bargain at the negotiating table. Remember that Mayo and Wolf both pounded the idea that this was going to be a different approach, 
they were going to handle players with more respect and appreciation, and they're going to have a stronger connection and all of those things, right, that they talked about. This is how you start to get there. So that part is that part. As far as who will cover a tight end or a deep crosser, we'll see what happens. You know, Sion Taki Taki is better in coverage than Mac Wilson. You know, will they mess around with Taki Taki in coverage? I think you'll see. I think you'll see him in coverage. As far as, you know, how the rest of this shakes out, we'll get into that in a minute. Because what I would do, and I think what you would do, JB, and what many people think the Patriots should do with Kyle Duggar is put him back where he belongs, which is in the box. He belongs in the box. He's an in-the-box safety. Safety slash linebacker hybrid type. That's who he is. That's when he's at his best. And if you're paying him $58 million, 32 and a half guaranteed, then you best put him in a position to succeed. And putting him in a position to succeed is to play him in the box because that's where he's best. There's no doubt about it. So I hope as they, and again, thanks JB for the super chat. I hope they have this plan of putting Duggar back to where he was in 2022 because he was better in 2022 than he was in 2023. It's, you know, it's looking at Michael Wenu as well and putting him at right tackle instead of right guard, trying to get more out of him. Tackle more important than guard. You have City So. So Duggar to me is an in-the-box safety. And, and Evan Lazar posted about this earlier today. According to Next Gen Stats, Duggar's average distance from the line of scrimmage at the snap last year was just about eight yards, 7.9. In 2022, it was 5.3 yards. So the utilization of Duggar, how you are going to deploy him, is crucial to me. In the box. Putting him in the box is crucial to me. 7.9 yards in 2023 from the line of scrimmage. So last year, he was almost eight yards away from the line of scrimmage. The year before, he was at about five yards. Three yards difference is gigantic. Get him closer. I want him around five yards to the line of scrimmage versus eight yards away from the freaking LOS. So how will they utilize him? I hope, I hope that they utilize him in the box. Last year, he still had a lot of tackles, career high in tackles with 109, and he played 98% of the snaps. But he was less impactful. And that's why I think you got to play him closer to the line of scrimmage because that's where he makes plays. He made tackles. He played a ton of snaps, but he did not have as much impact last year as he had in 2022. I mean, last year, he only had two interceptions and a sack and a half. So you need those impact plays. And remember, Demarcus Covington, when he was promoted to defensive coordinator, and he spoke to the media, remember one of the things that Covington brought up. He brought up turning the football over more. More impact plays defensively. And if you believe Covington at his word, if the Patriots are trying to do what they've got to do to create more turnovers and have more impact plays from that side of the football, one of the key things that you can do is put Duggar where he belongs because he is a guy that will make plays. He'll make some mistakes, but in the box, he will make plays. He will get after the quarterback. He will turn the quarterback over. He'll get your tackles for loss. He'll force a fumble or two. So get him back closer to the line of scrimmage. Get those impact plays back. Follow what Covington said. All right, Daniel Dominguez jumps in with a $10 super chat. Thank you, Daniel, on this Sunday. I love this signing. And Owenu, this is showing our guys you put in the hard work. You get what you deserve. I'm still hurting from letting Jacoby Myers walk. We still need a free safety in the draft. Yeah, I would love free safety. Now, here's the thing about free safety. Do they think that they have some options in-house? Do they think Marcus Jones, for example, can play some free safety with his speed and his athleticism? Again, that would be a gamble because of Jones's size and his injury history. But do they think that Jones is capable of playing some free safety? Do they put Jabril Peppers back more than they did last year and put Duggar in the box? Now, again, Peppers is more effective as an in-the-box safety, 
but do they think they can get something from Jabril Peppers playing the back end and, and not playing as much towards the line of scrimmage? Do they think that Jonathan Jones can play some free safety? Now, if they think that, then you would have to go to the next step, which is do they believe that Isaiah Bolden and or Alex Austin can be good enough on the outside? Because if they believe that one of those two young outside corners can play well enough with help because Gonzalez will be back, you'll have Gonzalez who is a, I think, travel with the wide receiver number one corner. If you have Gonzalez, you don't need to give Gonzalez help. You should not be giving Christian Gonzalez a lot of help this year. He should be on an island a decent amount. So now you can help the other outside corner. So do they think that with Bolden and with Alex Austin, do they think those guys with some help can handle that spot? Because if they think that, if those guys prove that to be the case during camp, then you can slide Jones, Jonathan Jones, either to the slot or you can kick him back to free safety and you can bring Marcus Jones in as the slot corner. So they do have some young talent. And we'll see if those guys can do the job. It's it's a big question mark. But they certainly know more about Bolden and Austin than we know about those two men. So if they're looking at this and they say to themselves, we're good with outside corner because we've got Jonathan Jones, Austin, and we we also have Bolden to go along with Gonzalez, we might be able to tinker and tweak and do some things with the slot corner, the nickel back, and then we can also play some games at free safety with Marcus Jones and Jonathan Jones. And maybe Isaiah Bolden is an option at free safety. So it's going to be fascinating. Outside looking in, I would love for them to bring in another vet outside corner as a safety blanket for some security. I would love them to go out and sign Justin Simmons, but we also have to keep in mind that they're spending a lot of money on defense. And we can't forget that. They have spent a lot of money on defense leading to today's deal with Kyle Duggar, which is even more money spent on defense. So they're going to have to eventually even out some of this spending defensively versus offensively. So are they willing to sign Justin Simmons to a contract after they just dumped the Brinks truck? You know, they backed the Brinks truck up and dumped the bag on Kyle Duggar. But that's the one thing we don't know about, right? Like, can they get more from Bolden and Austin than we think? And how does that impact the secondary? Because if you can kick Jones back to free safety and Marcus Jones plays the slot, or, you know, Marcus Jones is back at safety and Jonathan Jones is playing the slot, and you have, you know, you you end up having Bolden slash Austin on the outside with some help, then you get to the idea of they might be okay at free safety. It's a lot of questions. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. But Bolden did show talent. I mean, remember before his injury in the preseason. Isaiah Bolden was going to make this football team. And if there's one thing, and and who knows how much of it was Belichick, how much of it was Pellegrino, all of that. If there's one thing that we can look at defensively that has been a common thread is the ability for this team to get more, to get more out of defensive backs. Because what they have done a lot with this football team over the past, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And again, you know, I don't know how much of the pie goes to Belichick, but they have been very capable of bringing guys in, whether it's mid-round, late-round, or undrafted free agents at cornerback and gotten the most out of those guys. So I'm not going to write off Isaiah Bolden because he was he – was going to make this football team last year. I'm not going to write off Alex Austin, who showed some flashes last year. If one of those two guys can pop and help you at outside corner, then you can, you know, do different things with your back end, with with the safety spot. Somebody brought up in the chat, I just saw Marco Wilson. He's another name. Sean Wade is another name. Now, Sean Wade hasn't been great 
on the outside. I'd say he played slightly better last year. But Sean Wade's a guy who could play some slot as well. So we'll see how they put it all together. And I think this is another name that I want to get into as we talk about how they are going to handle Kyle Duggar and if they're going to deploy him closer to the line of scrimmage, which is what I hope they do. Spec to Dez brings up Marte Mapu. And yes, that that's the other name, right? If you're going to play Duggar closer to the line, then is Marte Mapu ready to play some free safety? We saw some mistakes last year, but the mistakes are expected when you're playing a young dude from Sacramento State. So what can Mapu do for this defense? Can he play some snaps at free safety? Can Peppers take a few snaps? So I'm sure we will get more explanation and description and all of that from DeMarcus Covington as we get closer to minicamp. Uh, the guys are in town this week for voluntary offseason, so that's good. I think that's another part of this signing, getting this deal done. You know, the timing of this deal makes a lot of sense because you're trying to get as many people, trying to get as many people in town on the same page as possible before you kick off this voluntary offseason program tomorrow, and now you have Duggar. Duggar's getting paid. Duggar's happy. Get him into the voluntary offseason program. You don't have to worry about him being, you know, unhappy or dissatisfied or whatever. You got him happy. You got him signed. Now he's ready to roll. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Try to hit 3,000 subscriptions by tomorrow. We're about 100 away. Let's continue that push. Get more eyeballs on the product. You can do that. You can help us out by giving us those likes on YouTube. And subscribe if you like what we do here at the Nick Cattle Show. On demand, people. Spotify, Apple Pods, just the audio version of this podcast. Slide over to YouTube. Give us that like and subscribe. And rate and review also helps an awful lot. So now, inevitably, the question is, what's next? Kyle Duggar, signed, sealed, and delivered. I would think Matthew Judon. I would think Christian Barmore. And we talked about spending money, right? So we also have to keep that in mind. Are they going to go out and get somebody like Justin Simmons? I don't know. I don't think it looks likely because they just dumped this money on Duggar and they want to get Christian Barmore done. And again, what we've learned from Elliot Wolf and Mayo is that what they say, they have been backing up for the most part. And people will talk about the weaponizing of the offense. Let's wait until the draft, right, folks? They're going to go heavy offense in the draft. Offense, 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 offense. But they said they wanted Duggar back, he's back. They wanted Awenu back, he's back. They want Judon here, I would think Judon gets something done. And they've said they want to sign Barmore to an extension and keep him here for the long term. So that would be another, I mean, the defensive tackle market is exploding money-wise. That's going to be another big fat contract with guaranteed money. So I would think they're trying to get all of their own guys done and they're going to try to get all of their guys done as much for as much as they can, as soon as they can. So that's what they're focused on. I would anticipate a Barmore deal getting done sooner rather than later. I would think that Judon gets something done sooner rather than later. And then you get into draft, offense, 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 maybe trading a pick for offense maybe trading a future pick or two for offense. So, as I've said from the beginning, a lot of people losing their mind over this offseason, not really sure why. I've been looking at this. The draft is the most important phase of your offseason when you're trying to build a program. So, if you get Barmore done, you get Duggar done, you get Awenu done, this defense, solid almost everybody returning with some young guys that can add, right? Hopefully Bolden and or Austin, as we talked about, Marcus Jones coming back from injury. And then by May 1st, if we're talking about a team by May 1st that has, let's say, for example, Drake May at quarterback, a young receiver, and maybe you even trade for another receiver, a vet guy, a lot can change over the next 
three to four weeks, folks. But I would expect them to go heavy offense in this draft. And as Evan Lazar brought up, we talked about it earlier, signing Duggar means one less position that you've got to worry about in the draft this year, next year. Ms. Stoopy says, Nick, you yourself told him, you gave him a C. Now you're changing your tune. Make up your mind. I mean, a C is a passing grade. I said people are losing their minds, which I don't understand. If I gave them an F like you did, which I think is a total overreaction, but hey, you have your own opinion. If I gave them an F and then said, I don't know why people are losing their minds, that would be contradictory. Gave them a C. And what else did I say, Mr. Snoopy? I gave them a C and I said that that was the grade as of that day, didn't I? I said, this is the grade right now. As we sit here, this is my grade for the Patriots offseason. It is a C. And I said in that podcast that you got to wait until the draft and that grading an entire offseason in March is ridiculous. So let's add the context and let's make sure people know who are jumping in the true story and the full story. I gave them a C, which is a passing grade. And I said, if by May 1st, we still have some big-time questions like, who's playing left tackle, that's a problem. And I will get my pitchfork and my torch ready, and I will march down to Gillette Stadium if we're still asking some of these major questions at critical positions post-draft. I stand by that. And I'll continue to stand by that. All right. That'll do it for today. I got to get back to wrestling, WrestleMania tonight. My Chinese food tonight should be a good time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment. I appreciate every one of you stopping by on a Sunday. We're 100 subscriptions away or so from 3,000 subscribers trying to hit that goal by tomorrow. Please do all that you can do to help us. Give us that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review on Spotify and Apple Pods. Everybody have a great rest of your Sunday. Back tomorrow at 11 a.m., Jaden Daniels will be in town tomorrow. We'll talk about Jaden Daniels because I do have some concerns that are possibly, how do I want to frame this? I do have some concerns, and those concerns are growing for me with Jaden Daniels. I do have some questions about Daniels, and the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of leaning away from the idea of Jaden Daniels. But Jaden Daniels will be in town tomorrow. We'll talk about him. We'll talk about that visit. Until then, tomorrow, 11 a.m. right here on the YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe, rate and review. And the Patreon page, slash Nick Cattles, C-A-T-T-L-E-S. Appreciate you. Thank you for joining us.